The Fishing Canada Show is brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company, Muscal, serious bug protection, Prince Craft Boats, the more you know, the better we look, and Mercury, number one on the water. Of all the trout species in existence, to me, the absolute ultimate has to be the speckled, or as it's sometimes called, the brook trout. This little beast fights like a pit bull, yet looks like an artist's painting. It's got every quality that any angler should be looking for. Green back, there he goes. Look at him. The brook trout's big square tail gives it extra pulling power, a short stubby body speed, and sharp little teeth make it an eating machine. Take all that and put it into a giant deep body of water with an extraordinarily rich food base, and you come up with the super strain of brookies called coasters. That is something else, man. Pete, Ange, and I have made our way to the top end of Lake Superior. We're in search of a species of speck called coasters. Now these fish reside in the big lake, but contrary to popular belief that they can only be found deep, coasters literally cruise the shallow shores or coasts of Lake Superior. Coaster brookies exist very similarly to the other brookies around the country. Whereas in the fall they traverse up rivers, creeks and streams to spawn, and once they return to the main lake, they cruise the shallows searching for food. Where they differ though, is in their size. Our destination for this trip is, get this, Bowman Island Lodge. Yeah, that's right, Bowman Island, as in Pete Bowman. Actually, it's got nothing to do with my roots, but it is a pretty good fit. We arrived at our driving destination, the Nipigon Harbor, where we were greeted by the lodge owner, Gary Lang. I couldn't help but wonder who the rest of the crew was, though, but I soon found out. Pete's relatives were yet again coming out of the woodwork. Almost every shoot we go on, Pete's got some kind of kinfolk paying him a family visit. This time it was Aunt Al and Yumps. Who knows who'll show up next? Maybe Granny and Uncle Jed. We were soon on our way out of the furthest north freshwater port in North America and down the Nipigon River towards beautiful Lake Superior, making your way to what may be the most mysterious of all the Great Lakes. Gary, how long have you been here? Well, I, I grew up here. I've been so I, I've been here 62 years. I, I was born and raised in the area. I've been going on Lake Superior. Started with a 14 foot and 18 horse going out to where we're going uh, when I was 14, and been going ever since. So you know every rock out there intimately, I'm assuming. In the area that I'm in, yeah, I know <laughs> quite a few of them even more intimately than I should. <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm fascinated with the whole coaster thing. I first heard about it when I was a kid. Uh, I, I think I read an article in a magazine about this this mysterious creature called coaster. Yeah. Ever since I've been intrigued, I've never, in all the years I've been doing this, I've never gone after this. Would be my oh. first time. Oh I yeah. Hard wait. Tell me about it. What what's, what well, makes them so special? Well, they actually come into the river, like the Nipigon River and the pine, Jack Pine Cypress along the North Shore, shore here to spawn. And they only stay in the creeks until they're small fry. And uh, usually late August, they all move out. They go back into the main lake and grow up in the lake. How long have you had the operation on the island? It's Bowman Island where we're yeah. going to, right? Yeah. That's another whole other story. Yeah. We'll get to it in a bit. Of. Yeah, uh, actually, I'm in full-time business. This is my second year okay. with the lodge. Because I just start, I started building it five years ago, and uh, it's, it's almost completed. Yeah. And uh, but before that, I worked here at the mill at Red Rock. Uh, and uh, did it. weekend excursions and a few weeks of holidays to, to mainly target the June fishing season. So give me a breakdown on the lake. Uh, we're going to be fishing what sort of depths predominantly? We're going to be fishing right into right into 18 inches of the water. You're going to be cast into the rocks and retrieving. Great. I love that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the only place that's warming up water. <laughs> and they're in there feeding and that's where we'll hit them. If your timing's right, during the spring, there's an amazing alternate fishery available on your venture towards the big lake. Ange and I jumped in the Prince Craft and started fishing feeder creeks that empty into the Nipigon River. Sometimes there's specks there, but other times they're bumped out. Whoa, baby, here we go. Nice one. Hard to say what. I'd like to see a speck, but we don't know. <laughs> what the net? We don't know where we're at. Um, what the net? You know what? Let oh, me get the net. It's a good size fish, whatever it is. Let me get the net out. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, he just pulled some drag on me. I can't be a spec, it's too big. Oh, well, what else is it gonna be? Oh my, that's is it a rainbow or a spec? That, look at him screaming. It almost looked like a lake trout. I don't wanna. <laughs> We're expecting a little speckled oh, trout. Oh, so what have we got? I can't. What did they pull, man? That, <laughs> looks like a, that looks like a laker. It's a rainbow. It's a rainbow. Look at that beautiful rainbow. Nice one. There you go. <laughs> that is beautiful, man. Yeah. <laughs> that is nice. The first creek we tried was absolutely loaded with steelhead. Got one. And it didn't seem to matter what we threw. Now these fish were giants, however, for a short, quick stop on the way to the good stuff, it was nothing short of phenomenal. <laughs> these that's darker. No, that's a darker fish, isn't look it? Look at that, look at that. It's wrapped up that's all the way. huge. We're going to call you the rainbow cake now. All right. Get unwrapped there. Bring him in. Get him in yeah. first, buddy. You'll never get him that way. There, there we go. go. That's spawned out. You can see how thin he is, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's a good bite. I thought, yeah, yeah right oh, in there. Yeah. Watch your finger. And a bucktail. <laughs> you know, there's lots of fish, we can do that. That baby took it on a bucktail. Yeah, he didn't even touch the fish. He's good to go. And watch that. That was a squirrely fish, that one. Look at that. See they it. just blast out of that net. I love that. <gasps> Okay, so spoons, bucktails, what else can we throw at him? I don't think it's gonna matter, buddy. Right here at the boat, buddy. <laughs> so he followed you. Just what I said, they don't do, and they did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one definitely followed. Cool. That one definitely followed us out. <laughs> Speck? Uh, I haven't really, I don't think so. I think he's another. It's long and skinny, eh? Yeah, another uh, rainbow. They don't have that real rainbow color to them. They're no. almost, almost a chrome. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it's a got chrome. a bit, a bit of That's rainbow. That's a good size fish. <laughs> Aren't they nice? <laughs> they're casting hard work to these things. Oh. We got here five minutes and we're pounding these fish. Whoa! The interesting <laughs> thing about these things is that uh, they're not a native fish, but they're a natural fish, and that they were originally brought into this area in the late 1800s. Gary was saying. Right. Yeah. So all of these are just naturally, naturally produced. That's, and that's fantastic. Yeah. Good, good job. Stuff, Look buddy. at the size of that fish, man. Now I got this box. If you want, okay. If you want to work on them right there, yeah. perfect. If you can, I'm going to bring it in the boat. There you go, buddy. Beautiful. He's off. I'm not even going to. We won't even have to hold him up. Just take a look at that fish. Right there. Fills the <laughs> net up. Beautiful. Fills the net right up. Those fish are going what? Five pounds? Not bigger than five pounds, dude. I think. I think. I don't know. Maybe between five maybe and seven pound rainbows, yeah. man. After Pete and I laid the smack down on those steelhead. Well, actually, Pete did that. I was smacking down the net. We caught up with the boat and continued our cruise. The steam out to the lodge is a great place to put together a fishing strategy by going over some of the hydrographic charts. A great tale that takes place very close to Bowman Island is the Island of Doom, Talbot Island, where one of the earliest lighthouses was erected in 1866. It was constructed as a white square wooden tower lit by three kerosene lamps. Legend has it that all three keepers of the lighthouse died at or close to the station, leading to the nickname Lighthouse of Doom. There are tales that in foggy, stormy weather, the white-haired wife of one of the keepers can be seen wandering sadly around the island. Our plans were for Ange and Pete to carry on looking for specks out of the Prince Craft. Myself, I was to venture out onto the Superior coastline on foot, fishing some of the crystal clear creeks that feed the lake. Two different styles of fishing for one species of fish. Although walking the shores of Lake Superior's coastline sounds like a daunting task, the work will be well worth the effort if the rewards are what I think they are. You get a great feeling out here that you're, you know, I mean, being from Toronto and Southern Ontario, to come here, it's almost like you're going into the wilderness of BC. There's no residents on any of the islands out here. They're only accessible for two or three months of the year. And I'm all alone out here. Some of these rivers have probably never been fished. There's one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at this. <laughs> He's gonna go down the beach here. Look at that, it's just crossing back and forth, bouncing off of rocks. <laughs> look at that. Come on. Whoa! 
That was heading for the bottom of Lake Superior. He turned around and ran. Come on, come on, come on. Oh! Whoa, look at that! You never know what you're gonna get here. There's rainbow trout, big giant brook trout. They call them coasters. This guy's taking me coast to coast. Come on, baby, come on, baby. I got a net behind me. This is the challenge here. You gotta be sort of a one-armed bandit. You're gonna wade out a little. Come on, girl. Come to Papa. Come on. The good thing about fishing on these islands out in Lake Superior is there's probably a dozen rivers like this off the, the big island of St. Ignis. Look at this fish go. Oh. <laughs> come on, you gotta come a little closer, baby. You're almost here. I don't know what it is yet. It looks like a, a, a little brookie. Beautiful. Ah, look at that. Nice little brook trout. <laughs> and, and I'm saying little because that's the area I'm in. Pete and I were up here last year catching five and six pounders in the Nipigon River. And this being Lake Superior. Look at that. It's, if you could only feel the, the feeling of this, it's like a slippery little soft eel. Beautiful fish. Just gonna hold it in the water here. Come on now. You go on there and get bigger. Woo! Wow! It just shot off like a bullet. That was awesome. Woo! When fishing an area like this creek mouth, it usually doesn't take long to tell if there are fish there. Specks are current predators, and they lie in wait for a morsel to drift by and then instantly rush out and grab it. <laughs> oh my God. Where do you see the bait I'm throwing for this? All you guys that catch bass at home, Southern Ontario, I'm catching giant brook trout off a rock with a Senko. Oh my God, look at the strike of this fish. All I can do is just put resistance on them and try and move them up current slowly. Come on, turn your head. Oh, Lodi. He wants to go in there. I got him out, I got him out. Wait till you see what this fish bit on. Wait till you see what this fish bit on. Oh, that's another nice one. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh, they're gorgeous. Go on, go on. A lot of you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. But look at this, I got a mosquito hook and I'm gonna wacky rig a soft stick bait. Just like that. Smallmouth bass fishing, guys love that. But here, I think these brookies will eat anything. Oh, it's another decent one. This is the second fish I've caught on a Senko. It's just unbelievable. Here she is here, here she is here. Come on. Gotcha. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at the way that's hooked. Just right in the nose. Should be able to pop that, no problem. Wow. Wow, they're slippery little buggers. Okay, darling, thanks for the fight. It's just awesome catching these fish here. Wow, now if you look right here, along the bank, this is the river's here, but when you want to catch brook trout, you're gonna look for water seeping through the shoreline here. This is really warm water because of the rocks. And they seem to just pile up out in front of it. On the opposite end of the first cast, first fish spectrum, once you catch a speck or two, things will slow down. I'm getting skunked. A fighting fish thrashing in the current will send up a flag for other fish in the area. The key is when things start to slow down, wait it out and try other baits. 
One thing a lot of people don't realize is there's smelt in uh, Lake Superior, millions and millions of smelt, and they come to these creeks just like the trout do and salmon do. So these brookies, they're real voracious and they like to eat smelt. So instead of a row bag or, or a worm, you just put on a little bait that sort of looks like a smelt. And you're gonna fish it the same way. You just drift it down with about two feet of line and a bobber stop. And then your, your float hits that stop. This will drop down into just above the rocks. And it looks like a smelt getting caught in the current and those brookies are just gonna smash it. So there you go. That's it, I just cut it with those scissors to make it flush with the head. And then I've got a bead and a bobber stop right here. So you can see I might have, might have two feet of line. Oh, well, look at that, I just passed a rock and that float disappeared. Who'd have thought? <laughs> this is almost like a perch rig. It's a, a little jig head with a minnow bait on it. Soft body minnow bait. Oh, this fish is strong. Oh! Whoa! He's heading out to the lake! Pull and drag! I just saw another fish roll over there. He just shot off. Whoa, easy girl. Easy girl. Easy. Oh, look at this. It's a nice one. See, so I'm gonna come behind this rock here. Oh, this is a gorgeous fish. Let the waves do some of my work for me. Oh, beautiful, beautiful brookie. Oh. Settle down, settle down. Should be able to just pop this. It's, it's hooked really good. Oh. Easy now. Easy now. <laughs> ah. Look at that. Look at the white fins. That is gorgeous. That's probably male. It's got a bit of a kite here. Let's slide it right back in here. Look at that. See you later. <laughs> that was killer. The time has finally arrived. After warming up with the steelhead, Whoa. we now go after what I consider the most exotic Canadian species available, the coaster. I've been waiting ages for this one. What a contrast to the steelhead fishing we just did on the feeder creeks along the Nipigon. Rainbow trail right there. That steelhead. Is beautiful. Gorgeous fish. Here, the water is bigger, colder, cleaner. You name it. It's a whole new ball game. They're called coasters because they work the coast of the Lake Superior. But what Andrew and I found here right now is just a big rock point that's come out. So it's a big bouldery point, just, just like we were smallmouth fishing. I think they're up, down, all around it. I think they're just yeah. moving. When they're in the creek mouths, they're feeding on the trout row, the rainbow row, stuff like that. Here, they're probably hitting bait fish. Keep in mind, I mean, it's been a long, tough winter on these fish. They haven't had a whole lot of time uh, to, to get all stocked up again from the, from right. the cold. And this would have been froze over. I, oh, for uh, sure. I assume this would have been froze over. Oh, yeah, shallow. this channel for sure. Yeah. One of the coolest things about this coaster fishing is it's more like bass fishing than it is trout fishing. You throw spinners, spoons, crankbaits, and minnow baits along the shore in the extreme shallows, waiting for one of these little predators to nail it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got him? Yeah, he's on. Uh... Good job. What do you got him on? Uh, to, uh, that little crankbait. He took around the surface, too. Oh, look at that beautiful fish, man. How's that? Work? Nice work. He's off the net. Perfect. Let him, <laughs> let him show him to the camera, flipping around like a crazy lunatic fish. Oh, my God, fish. I'm just going to throw him back. He's going to get hooked up again. Oh, there's your line. Off. There's your hook. Thank you. Look at him. Easy, easy. See, uh, wow, he just shot out of there, man. Fish in Canada Hotspots, the ultimate fishing guide presents Getting There. Today's hotspot is a shoreline point at the mouth of the Nipigon River where it empties into Lake Superior. The waypoint on your screen will take you right there. We fish with small spoons, size one and two spinners, as well as crankbaits to catch a variety of species. When you're fishing here, think more like you're fishing for bass or pike even no trout or your quarry. To get to this amazing Lake Superior trout fishery, we first drove north on Highway 400 to 69, and then took Highway 17 West all the way to the town of Nipigon. 
From there, we met Gary Lang at the Nipigon Marina and made the long steam to Bowman Island Lodge. Visit fishincanada.com for more details. Fish in Canada was brought to you in part by the Rocket Fishing Rod. MyOutdoorTV.com, outdoor television on the internet. Stearns, the life jacket experts. And RadioWorld.ca. Closed captioning provided by Ontario Tourism. Go fish in Ontario.com. For more Fish in Canada, visit FishinCanada.com. Bye.